Have you ever heard of a chip built without a trace of silicon? For the first time in history, engineers have created a fully functional processor without a single drop of it. And what's even more unbelievable is that it doesn't just work. It may be the fastest and most efficient chip ever made. It sounds like science fiction, but it's pure science, and it could rewrite everything we know about technology. Since the 1960s, silicon has set the pace of our digital world. It powers our computers, phones, satellites, rockets, smart appliances, even our coffee machines. But silicon is finally hitting its limit. This isn't about engineering anymore. It's physics. It's quantum mechanics, the moment when atoms stop following the rules. And it was at this exact moment that a heavy, colorful crystal, looking almost like psychedelic art, suddenly appeared on the scientific radar. When electrons begin slipping through walls, you know chip miniaturization has hit a critical point. We're already working at three nanometers, soon two, and then even less. But here's the problem. At this scale, traditional electronics starts breaking its own rules. Transistors, those tiny switches that flip signals on and off, become so small they begin acting like quantum systems, and that changes everything. Imagine trying to shut a door, yet the wind still blows straight through. That's what happens with electrons. They start tunneling through a process called quantum tunneling, slipping through barriers that should be solid, like walking through a wall. Inside a chip, this means losing control of signals, leaking currents, scrambled data, and collapsing performance. This quantum limit is what threatens to silence silicon. No matter how far engineering goes, nature is hitting the brakes. Hit like and subscribe. You don't want to miss what's next. And that's why scientists began searching for something new. Not just a replacement, but a material capable of opening completely different paths. And that's when an old name from the periodic table started to stand out. The iridescent crystal that could take silicon's place. Its name is bismuth. At first glance, it looks like nothing more than a lab ornament a heavy metal with strange geometric shapes and an almost psychedelic shine. But behind that eccentric exterior is an atomic behavior that challenges everything we understand about semiconductors. Bismuth carries a rare feature, extremely strong spin-orbit coupling. In other words, the spin of electrons, a quantum trait acting like a direction of rotation, is closely tied to how they move around the nucleus. And this opens the door to something revolutionary. While silicon manages electrons only through charge, bismuth lets us control spin as well. This shifts the entire game. Now, instead of just turning a current on and off, we're entering the realm of quantum processing at chip scale. It's the kind of property that could lead to new transistors, new memories, even new qubits. But there's a catch. Bismuth naturally lacks a band gap, making it behave like a metal. Without a band gap, there's no switching. And without switching, there's no computational logic. End of the road? Not exactly, because there is a solution through doping, adding chemical elements to bismuth to modify its electronic structure. And that's exactly what a Chinese team accomplished, creating for the first time a functional bismuth-based semiconductor, the first silicon-free chip in history. The breakthrough happened inside a laboratory at Peking University, recorded in a study published in the journal Nature. There, the researchers took bismuth already doped with telluride and assembled, layer by layer, the first functional silicon-free chip ever built. But they pushed even further. This chip wasn't just a simple proof of concept. It was produced at the Nor H. Onongstrom scale, a level of engineering even smaller than 2 nanometers, reaching dimensions where components are measured in units smaller than a silicon atom. To put it in perspective, some parts of the transistor are only 0.5 nanometers thick, and this is exactly where silicon breaks down. Because below 3 nanometers, quantum effects disrupt everything. Yet with bismuth, those barriers seem to vanish. Moreover, tests revealed that this doped bismuth chip can run at frequencies above 500 gigahertz, while the most advanced chips from Intel, Apple or Samsung barely hit 5 to 6 gigahertz, this prototype already exceeds 500 gigahertz and keeps going. It also uses three times less energy and has a 40% faster switching speed. The comparison data came from actual transistors built by Intel, TSMC and Samsung, and the bismuth chip outperformed them all. Graphene, the invisible thread of the new generation. But bismuth wasn't advancing alone. To connect the transistors in the new chip, 
the engineers turned to graphene, the thinnest, lightest, and strongest material known. A conductor so efficient it enables microscopic links with almost zero loss. The result? A fully silicon-free chip with bismuth transistors and graphene connections, each layer built with atomic-level precision, every detail crafted for the post-silicon age. But building that chip is a completely different challenge. In the gate around architecture they used, the transistor channels are entirely wrapped by the control electrode, demanding engineering accuracy down to the millimeter. Imagine crafting a sheet only 0.5 nanometers thick and then folding another sheet of the same thickness around it, all without ever seeing the underside. That precision was achieved only by alternating layers of bismuth and graphene, stacking them one after another until four transistors formed a single compact block. And to keep performance intact, the whole structure rested on a silicon platform used only as physical support. No active component relies on silicon. It's like witnessing the dawn of a new electronics era, where shimmering crystal and pure carbon take the place of the material that powered our world for generations. The race for the next chip generation has already begun. The test results were unmistakable. The bismuth chip surpassed the biggest manufacturers on the planet in three decisive categories. Speed, energy efficiency, and leakage control. These three pillars determine the future of processes. And more than that, they determine who will dominate the next digital revolution. And in this contest, China is already ahead. The groundbreaking research came from Peking University. China controls over 70% of global bismuth reserves. A detail once seen as trivia is quickly turning into leverage. In short, if this type of chip scales up, the nation that holds bismuth will command the next leap in computing. It's no surprise that giants like TSMC are already moving. In collaboration with MIT and National Taiwan University, TSMC has begun testing bismuth as a contact material for upcoming transistor designs. This makes it clear the shift has started and there is no return. In fact, transitions driven by new materials have always defined each technological era. It happened with copper, then silicon, then germanium. And now it's bismuth's turn. And while engineers rewrite the foundation of hardware, another revolution is rising in software. The surge of artificial intelligence as a tool for creation, analysis, and automation. If you still haven't begun mastering these tools, you're losing far more than just time. You're losing ground. The AI course, the new gold of the internet, shows you exactly how to use AI to earn income, generate content, build systems, and speed up projects, even if you've never written a single line of code. And by joining, you not only learn deeply, but also directly support the channel. The link is in the description, and the QR code is on the screen. The post-iconic era has already begun, yet it remains confined to the laboratory. Despite the remarkable progress, we are far from holding a product ready for everyday use. The bismuth chip exists today only as a prototype. It functions flawlessly, surpassing benchmarks that challenge even the best silicon chips, but it relies on an entire ecosystem that has yet to mature. Producing high-purity doped bismuth, building layers with atomic precision and aligning graphene at an industrial scale are all feats still far from matching the robustness of silicon manufacturing. Silicon, after all, benefits from decades of standardization, specialized machinery, a well-established supplier network, refined infrastructure, and optimized factories. Bismuth, by contrast, is in its infancy, a fledgling technology waiting to spread its wings. Adapting this material for mass production will require entirely new machines, brand new processes, and perhaps even new factories. It will be expensive, time-consuming, and painstaking. But the signal has been sent. The transition is underway. Like every historical leap in technology, it will begin small, academic, cautious, restricted to research centers and military prototypes until one day someone cracks the code and scales it up. When that moment comes, the market will shift as violently and fundamentally as it did when we abandoned vacuum tubes for transistors. The question is no longer whether silicon will be replaced. The real question now is, who will be the first to transform this technology into industrial dominance? The future is being written not in circuits alone, but in crystals and atoms. Bismuth, graphene, vertical architectures, and frequencies surpassing 500 gigahertz. This isn't gradual evolution anymore. This is the dawn of a completely new paradigm.
just as silicon once replaced germanium and chips replaced vacuum tubes, this next generation of materials could open pathways that we can barely imagine. Faster, thinner, smarter, perhaps even more conscious chips may soon emerge, but no revolution ever occurs in isolation, and no technology is born perfect. The fate of bismuth now hinges on forces far beyond a laboratory. It depends on industry, investment, engineering, politics, and patience. And as with all monumental technological shifts, it may also depend on who is paying attention when the tectonic plates of the market begin to move. So here's the question for you. Can silicon hold out for another decade, or are we witnessing the birth of its replacement? Leave your opinion in the comments below. And if this video opened your eyes to the future of computing, give it a like and share and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps the channel keep bringing content with this depth, detail, and perspective. See you in the next episode.